Hi, my name is uh, Monica Förster and I'm the creative director and founder of Monica Förster Design Studio. The studio is based in Stockholm in uh, uh, the Södermalm area and it was founded in 1999. Since then we're working, we've been working on a worldwide basis with amazing clients and uh, we work in the fields of furniture design, objects, um, limited edition, interior and installations, and sometimes even exhibitions like this. We are standing at the National Museum of Science and Technology here in Stockholm, and we are very happy to have designed the exhibition Hyperhuman. The exhibition Hyperhuman deals with the relation between humans and machines or humans and technology and uh, what happens when the technology is encroaching upon our bodies and minds and for every day technology takes more and more place in our life but we have also been interested in technologies and new possibilities for thousands of years and we have also tried to work with enhancements for a very long time. What happens when technology takes place in our life more and more and also in the society where we work with AI and digital technology more and more and we wanted to encourage conversation to people, to our visitors, to reflect and discuss with each other about this issue. How do we want our future to become and how can we live together with technology? I was really happy to have been asked to design this exhibition. Um, I think the, the theme, hyperhuman, and the relationship between uh, technology and humans is a really, really interesting theme. And so it was very difficult for me not to, to accept. And I think it was also very, very courageous by the Technical Museum because I think that. The, very early uh, in the process we, um, we gave the idea of collaborating or making the whole exhibition together with technology, meaning in this case AI, and, and also to have a quite artistic free approach to the exhibition. I'm actually standing here now um, in the middle of, of a deconstructed prototype that has been uh, designed uh, using the AI as a tool. And uh, I would say that this whole process has been quite challenging, it's been quite experimental. We didn't really know what would come out of this. And, uh, and, uh, but I have to say a lot of fun as well. And uh, it's, this time we've used huge robots to uh, uh, print this sort of seating island and it's 3D printed wood. I actually really love how the machine has sort of where, where all the mistakes are, like for example here where you can see that the machine is not really working or where we've had to sort of patch things up and where for example here where actually a part of, of this has melted. It looks really raw, you can really feel that it's like a in the beginning of something and I think that this is actually what, what exactly what this whole process is because when we were starting to collaborate with this AI um, you know we thought about all these really difficult questions like how can we use the AI can we use it how, for how people can move in the room and what it would be the best shape to have in a certain uh, space with, for example, 30 people in the room and so on. We have many, many different uh, questions. And to be honest, uh, my feeling was that the AI we were working with is not that developed today. So what we had to do is sort of take a few steps back and make up some one-liners for the AI, and uh, some, some other types of challenges. So what we did was that we, we asked the AI to start with the geometric shape and, and asked the AI to uh, maximize the strength 
and minimize the material, meaning that um, we were looking at it for, from a more sustainable point of view. How can we use as little material as possible? So um, for the exhibition cabinets, I wanted to play with the idea of deconstruction. So what we really did was to take the inspiration of the nets where you're entering the exhibition and we took away parts and put them back in together in a new way and I, I really wanted to create something that would feel quite magic and um, and to really enlighten and enhance the, the museum pieces so um, to be able to do that we have worked with a black structure and with a combination of tinted glass and clear glass. You can't really see the tinted glass since we're actually standing in a rather dark room, but the feeling is really that the light is closed in to this box and it lifts up the, the museum pieces instead. So here it's actually possible to see sort of um, um, the beginning of, of uh, how we worked with the AI. Here we, were, we have worked with a geometric shape and which is uh, supposed to be used as a bench and with a hole inside so if you're like a child you can crawl through it and play a little bit. And then what we wanted to see was what would happen when the AI started to remove material and from that we have also worked uh, on, on the pieces uh, after the AI has, has started to do its job. I think this is really beautiful when, when something like this happens. It, it feels like almost like a Gaudi thing or, or something. One of the, the very interesting ways we're working with the, the technology was that I never knew what could be expected. So it wasn't really possible to follow the original idea. Uh, we had to sort of take new turns all the time, depending on what the AI came back with. And we, uh, that we could also take uh, on to the next step. So, um, this is again where uh, parts of the exhibition where we have uh, done the, the, the AI collaboration and we wanted to look into very simple geometric things such as for example pillars that would um, help uh, the construction of a house and um, asking the AI again to uh, make it as strong as possible but to remove as much material as possible. So I'm standing here leaning towards uh, something which is, is printed in 3D wood and it actually looks like a tree because the interesting thing was that I imagined when we started to work with, with AI that um, it would be something that would be much more geometric but instead there were very organic, very sort of where you would feel a little bit uh, like it's, it's an, an opening in a forest. Also what, what we tried to do was we tried another material, uh, also this material 3D printed and it's actually 3D printed starch. And the interesting thing both with this uh, the starch and the 3D printed wood well, is that when the exhibition is over you can also send it back to the 3D printing uh, factory and they grind it down and, uh, and put it back into the printer to print new things. And from my point of view again I, I really really appreciate all the mistakes, all the, the, the things that came out and, and because it looks like it's a part of the tree, it looks like something very organic, it looks like, and I'm also, when I'm walking around to look at this, I'm thinking about, I mean, if you look at that hole up here, it's like, I'm really thinking about what, 
how, what was the approach of the AI here? It just looks like something is broken, but it's, it's actually calculated with numbers. I think all of this is really, really interesting. And for example, if we look, have a look at this side over here, there is a split. We can see a split between where the, the 3D printer has started and, and where it stopped. And for me, it just becomes, even though that it's kind of rough, it's kind of, you can see all the mistakes, it's, it's quite beautiful. It looks like someone has been using a sewing machine in, in a pretty bad way or <laughs> something. Uh, anyway, quite, quite interesting with these kind of uh, little, little defaults. What was really striking to me uh, when we started to started the design process with the AI was that how ugly I thought things looked like because we are uh, my design studio Monica Forrester Design Studio is really based in a, an in a Scandinavian tradition of design. However, we're very idea based, but still. And then to have to deal with all of this really, really organic, very weird shapes coming out, I must say must, was probably the most challenging thing for me in this project. Um, however, after some time, I sort of got used to it and I even started to like it. Hyperhuman is about the relationships between technology and humans in the past and towards the future. Thank you very much for watching.